Hey everyone, it's Erin from Erin Bun Paints. Welcome back to another acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you step by step how to recreate the beautiful painting beside me. It's called Sleepy Hangout. Today I'll be using all five of my usual paint colors. I have red, yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white. And the brushes I use are my usual three. We have the large flat brush, the medium round brush, and the small round brush. As usual, the footage from this tutorial was taken from a recent live stream of mine. If you want to tune in live next time, then you have two options. You can check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Paints. That's where I stream both the acrylic painting tutorials as well as painting content about four to five times throughout the week. Or you can check me out on Facebook at facebook.com slash Paints. That's where I stream just the acrylic painting tutorials through Facebook Live. Otherwise, if you want an easy way to check out all of my past tutorial designs, then you can check out my Instagram at instagram.com slash Paints. And if you're looking for any of my past tutorials, they're all right here on YouTube. So I'd recommend subscribing to my channel and then that way you never miss a tutorial when it's uploaded. All right, time to hang out. Enjoy the tutorial. First brush you can use. First brush you can grab is this large flat brush. There it is. You can dip it in your paint water to begin. And we're going to start with a nice yellow, or sorry, white, excuse me, a nice white center. So in taking my large flat brush, I'm just dumping some white on my plate here. And I'm starting with a nice white circle in the very center. Here I go. Grabbing that, going to the center, doing a nice round circle. You are filling in the circle, of course. You're going to be filling in the middle and then kind of rotating outwards. And this is again going to be for our background. It's kind of like a white center. It goes out to a nice yellow glow. So start with that. Uh, I'll just take a quick minute to catch up on comments and make sure everybody's taken care of. And then we will move right along to blending this circle out. Do, 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 do. And then Leanna, oh, I'm sorry, I meant ca cadmium or lemon. Ooh, good question. Uh, I think cadmium's a little darker, so I would go with lemon. Hi, Erin, watching from the Philippines. Ooh, uh, Tanzia, is that right? Tanzia, welcome in. If I mispronounce that, please let me know and I can uh, correct myself. Watching you now, we'll paint later. No worries, Cindy, as you just walked in the door. No worries, relax, it's Friday night. Have a good time. Krithi, the day of dreaming sloth, the sleepy sloth, good title names. Good morning, Heather, all the way from Australia. Hello, cheers to Sharon. Mignon, hi, watching from uh, Philippines as well. God bless you today, you too, you too, cheers. Will this video be available later? Yes. Uh, Miriam, I'm so excited. I'm glad you're excited. Uh, yes, to answer that question for anyone who's wondering, uh, the video is always available immediately after this live stream on Facebook and on Twitch, and then eventually on YouTube. All of my, all of my past tutorials are currently on YouTube and they always make their way there. So I'd recommend to go to YouTube um, if you'd like to see any and all of my tutorials, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. Again, I see a lot on Twitch. I'll grab you guys in a quick second, quick second. Okay, so I've got a nice big white circle. Um, I guess I'll point out as well, it's always good to make the circle maybe a little bit bigger. See how my circle here is quite small. I always make it a little bigger because when we blend, it's probably going to shrink up a little bit. So just so you know that, I'd recommend making it a little bit bigger than you think. Uh, it's a little easier to do it that way rather than making it too small and potentially shrinking it up too, too much. So just a suggestion. Uh, but next what I'm doing is I am pouring some yellow on my plate and I'll be mixing yellow and white together to make a nice light yellow. I would say like even amounts, even amounts of yellow and white. Can you show your paintbrushes again? Yes, Marion. One two, three. There you go. So whenever you have your white circle, I'm just going to, um, you can go ahead actually and grab your large flat brush that you were just using. And again, you're mixing yellow and white on your plate or palette, whatever fancy, fancy thing you have today. I've got my usual volcano plate. It's having a little rest on my table. If anyone would like to see it, I'm happy to bring it forward, but for now it's taking a little rest. I'm taking a rest by not holding it really. <laughs> so once you have that mixed, you can go around the circle. You can see I'm going pretty messy. I will blend this out to make it a little bit more smooth, a lot more smooth actually. But for now I'm just rotating around that white circle. 
And I'll continue to add just a little bit further out with this nice kind of light kind of buttery yellow color. So a nice thick ring around the white circle. Again, I will blend this in a minute. I'm just putting the paint on first. I like to put the paint on first and then I'll blend it. Uh, Miriam, I think I just showed them. Let me know if you didn't see them. I can do it one more time for you. Perhaps the comment is delayed. Let's see. Oh, you're talking DVD, I see. I'm catching up a lot here. <laughs> and some reference pro game. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sleepy Sloth, good name Lori. Back to two Shane's, welcome back. Slow Summer is good. Yes, two Shane's, please consider it. Hang in there is a good one. See, yeah, they're all gonna convince you now, two Shane's, now that they know that you're uh, considering it, they're all gonna come at you. <laughs> it's a good thing though. It means they, they want you to play, and I do too. Let me know if you decide it. Love, hate. Sloth boss, I like that, Psycho. Horror game, huge sound of fill. Yeah, it's a pretty spooky game too. So, I mean, it works that way as well if you're looking for a nice kind of spooky horror type thing. Okay. All right, everybody. So I've added my nice buttery yellow again. You can see it is not even at all. It's not a perfect circle at all. So don't worry if yours is looking a little like an oval. Fruit fly, please go away. Um, I just want to blend this now. I want to focus on blending it into the white. So what I've done now is I've washed off my large flat brush. It's the brush we've been using. It doesn't need to be perfectly clean. I'm just trying not to have any extra paint on it. Please, you're going to get stuck. There we go. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe in between the yellow and the white, the buttery yellow and white. So I'm just using the kind of large width, uh, wide end of my brush here, wide edge, excuse me, not the wide end. <laughs> uh, and I'm just going in between the yellow and the white. So I'm trying to blend these two together as they're both wet. So the white paint should still be fresh and wet. The light yellow, of course, would be fresh and wet as well because that was added second and just kind of brushing all in between. You can see I'm rotating my brush and my fingers as I go because I like using that wide edge. It really helps kind of smooth it all out with the bristles all nicely, uh, you know, spread apart like that. And you can see how it's removing any edge that we once had. So I'm not concentrating on the outside edge, just the inside edge right now. You don't need to worry about the outside quite yet. We'll be blending the outside edge as well. So that's why I'm saying it's uh, pretty oval-like right now and it will be fixed up. So do not worry. Now, what tends to happen when you're doing this is sometimes the yellow closes in and you can see my yellow closed in just a little bit there. If you find it closed in too, too much, uh, what you can do is just make sure that you wash off your brush every now and then. You can grab some white paint and you can keep adding white either in the middle or just kind of on the outside as you go along. It'll help kind of continue to bring that nice white spot back into where it should be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'll give you a quick minute or two if you're still blending away or adding that yellow and then we can move on to the very outside of the painting there. Yes, two shanes, I think it would be a fantastic timing. Oh, Groki. <laughs> I don't know if I'm able to do that. I forgot to turn these off. I'll, uh, I'll do it after, okay? I don't know how to turn these off. Manage. See, that's another thing I need to be doing before the tutorials because I can't be doing that in between. Don't worry, I'll get a nice little cuddle time in there after. <laughs> Wherever you are. Oh, no worries, Brittany. Lisa, welcome in. Lisa Lasko, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave him for a little later. Of course, of course. Kay's welcome in as well. Thanks for contributing to that goal there. Hope you're well. It's all fine. Excellent. Okay. I'm glad you understand. <laughs> Again, I feel bad that I've left those up. I'm trying to close them down just to make sure nobody's... Well, because... Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know if I can navigate this right now. Because I want to keep some of them open. Do, 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 do. Can keep that one, keep all those. Great, okay. All right, everybody. So I assume we have that nice light yellow on there, kind of blended in with the white as well. So now what we can do is we can move on to a nice bright yellow kind of around the edges. So it'll just kind of brighten up everything, make it a little more punchy, 
rather than our nice light yellows that we have currently. There we go. Cool. Yeah, Charlene, I saw the lighting. Check this out. If you do this, it lightens up and then when you put it back, it doesn't. It's just the automatic. Oh, it kind of stayed. Excellent. Thank you. Um, it's just the automatic uh, FaceTime camera that does that. I'm trying to invest in a new camera right now um, <laughs> so that it stops doing that. But thank you. I appreciate it. I wish I could uh, know more about how to affect my FaceTime camera, but it kind of just does its own thing. <laughs> Anyway, everybody, once we have that light yellow on, you can now wash off your brush and you can grab just plain yellow. So I'm just dipping into the plain yellow I have. It's a nice, very, very bright yellow. Hopefully you can see a nice difference there. It's a little bit brighter. You can see it if I tilt it there, it's a lot more pigmented rather than the light yellow I was using. And what we're doing is pretty much the same thing. We're just grabbing that. We're going around the previous circle nice and close in too. So you can go nice and tight around and then we will blend it. I just like to put the paint on first and then we will blend. We will blend. Do, 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 do. Uh, you're welcome. Just relaxing, watching paint. Excellent case. I'm glad. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Unless you're overseas, maybe it's Saturday already. <laughs> Get into that time, yeah, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's 8 p.m. here, it's still Friday, it's still Friday. Either way, it's the weekend. So again, you can see just continuing to grab yellow paint, slopping it on all around that light yellow, and then we will blend it. Lots of yellow for this painting. But yes, that was a question. If you have green ready to go, you're welcome to use green. I'll be using uh, yellow and blue to mix green. But if you have one already ready to go, then that's even easier. I just stick to the primaries to make sure that uh, as many people can join in as possible. If you happen to have just the primary colors in black and white, then you're fine. If you happen to have a whole rainbow of colors, then you're fine as well. Dinner. Gonna go figure a dinner right back. No worries, two Shanes. Thanks for popping in. Done already. What? Kit Kat? You're what? Oh, no way. No way. Give it a little lurk. 217. Yeah, exactly. It's Saturday for some of you there. 417. Gotcha. Saturday morning. Yes, yes, yes. All the Europeans. So everybody, once you have that yellow on, you're just blending it into the previous color. It's the same thing as what we did with the white. I'm just using the flat edge of the brush here, the nice wide bristles and going around and trying my best to mix this nice plain yellow into the lighter yellow that we laid down a little earlier. And that way it's a nice smooth transition between the two. There we go. Again, the lighting is not really allowing for that nice transition, but it goes from white to a nice light yellow to a nice plain bright yellow. So I'll just give everyone a minute or two for that at least. Um, if you'd like a little bonus step, you are welcome to paint the edges of the canvas as well. And that kind of just completes the whole painting. I'm just going to test the lighting real quick. See, it should be doing that. It focuses too much on there. And here's the thing, the more I add to the painting, the more it starts to lighten up because the camera will focus on the outsides a little bit more in the background. So I'm sure it'll get a little better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Slothing off, I like that for me, it's very good. Jackie, hi, welcome in, glad you're here as well. Tegan's throwing some little sloth emojis. I don't know if you guys have like updated emojis or something. I looked for a sloth emoji for a long time and I couldn't find it in my emoji collection, so. <laughs> I don't know where mine is. <laughs> Maybe I need an update. Elizabeth, thank you for your time. You're welcome. You're welcome. Mert, just watching tonight. No worries. Heather, yes, it's 1020 AM. Yes, happy Saturday. I shouldn't keep saying happy Friday. I know a lot of you, it's Saturday already. Just like happy weekend, you know? Happy Friday, Saturday, happy weekend. Oh, you're welcome, Miriam. Shaba, hi, just joining now. We'll watch and paint tomorrow. No worries, no worries. If you have any questions, just let me know. My son says, hi, Aaron. Hi, sweet mama's son. Hello. 
Is that white circle that's messing with the lighting? It might be, yeah, uh, it might be Anna. Cause usually at this point it's, uh, the lighting's a little bit better and it did get a little better, but it's still not what it could be. I know, I'm sorry. I wish I could alter it. It's just, I need to use this FaceTime camera for, uh, these tutorials, unfortunately. So it, it just kind of does its own thing. This is manageable. Uh, and just know that on YouTube, guys, I do edit it to kind of boost things like the lighting and everything. So if you'd prefer waiting for that, that's totally fine as well. No worries. It all works out. Okay, there's a sloth. Yes, I know Twitch has a lot of sloth emotes. I've got one too. Not me personally, but another, uh, another channel has a sloth. There we go. <laughs> Aaron, you have to try kangaroo jumping fourth class tomorrow, tomorrow. Ooh, cool, cool. Uh, we have made my son's night. Oh, okay. <laughs> if a name would help, if you're comfortable sharing your son's name, I'm happy to shout him out and say hello. But either way, I'm glad I made your night. <laughs> Aaron went to the dark side. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to. My white circle has almost disappeared. Oh, well, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I had to learn that the hard way many, many times before I started making my white circles very, very big because I knew they would start to shrink up, but that's no problem. And the white circle ends up getting pretty, pretty uh, covered up anyway. It's just more like this little upper side here. So it's no worries, it's no worries. You know how it is. Sometimes it doesn't work out the exact way, but it's all okay. <laughs> Slop. His name is Travis. All right, hello, Travis. Shout out, Travis. Welcome in. Hope you're having a good night, Travis. Oh yeah, says iHearts. Oh yeah. But oh no, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I mean, if there's cookies there, I'm down. <laughs> All right. Hope that was enough time for everybody. I think we're gonna go on to the leaves. Now, the leaves, um, if you're confident with the leaves, you can go in straight with green. I did do a little bit of white to start with just to kind of map out where the leaves are. So I will do that to start because uh, that's what I did in the original. I did definitely go in with uh, white to help kind of sketch out the leaves. I sketched out the uh, the branch and the sloth as well just to kind of lay everything down. I usually do that because white is very easy to cover up. So if you make a little mistake here and there, or you feel like you need to readjust something, it's a lot easier to do that rather than trying to do that with a dark brown or you know deep green that you've already put on. So um, I'm going to be using white to do that. Um, let me change that. I'm actually going to be using a different color so you can see, but you should be using white. Okay. I know that's uh, a little confusing, but just uh, go ahead and use white for the following steps. I'm going to be using maybe like a light green or something so you can see a little easier because white on this is not going to be easily seen. So everyone else, you can use white paint. Um, the brush I'll be using is a nice medium round brush. I would say any medium size brush is totally fine. Okay. Um, so grab whatever medium round or medium size brush you have and grab some white paint. Again, I'm trying to make that clear. Grab the white paint. I will be using like a light green or something just so you can see it better. Okay. But you should use white paint. It's a lot easier for you. And uh, again, it allows you to cover up things if you make mistakes. Really any light color allows for that, but white is of course just the easiest. So that's why I recommend it. So again, you're using white paint. You'll see me using a nice light green just for the sake of visuals for you. I'll keep repeating it as I go because I'm so worried someone's gonna be using green here. Medium round, white paint, white paint. I'm actually gonna start with the sloth. I know I just started talking about the leaves, but I like to put the sloth on first. There we go. So I'm going to lay down where the branch is. The branch is definitely above halfway and that's that the sloth kind of rests in the halfway area or in the middle, I should say. So we can take that. We can start roughly just a little bit above halfway. And I'm just going to do a angled line going up like this. And I'll do a second edge below it because then we have a nice thick branch. It can be nice and shaky. It doesn't need to be a clean line anywhere. Again, this is just a sketch for everybody. Okay, just a sketch. I just know things like the sloth and leaves might be a little, little scary for some. So I do think a sketch is best here. In theory, you could just go in with the color though. So again, I would use white paint to help sketch it out. I am using green just for visuals. <laughs> Sorry if I'm repeating myself a lot. I know I am. I just want to make sure everyone's hearing that okay. All right, let's get the sloth on here. So sloth, I start just a little bit further in from the left here. We have a nice leg that's wrapped around. And so what I did is I kind of started with a nice big archway 
of the leg coming down and then the back which kind of comes down and then back up. So you can start again just a little bit on the inside here. I'm going to start on the top edge. I'm going to do a quick little curve. That's going to be his leg kind of wrapping around. And it wraps around into a nice big curve. You're almost like following, almost following the circle a little bit. You're not staying tight to the circle, but the roundness of the circle. If you want to use the roundness as a guide and kind of swoop down like that, I'm sure that would be helpful. And then coming back up before the right hand side, we want to make sure we're leaving room for the head. So a nice big curve for that nice large body that's just hanging right there. Vivian, if I can help you with anything, let me know. Denser, I'm first time attending, so excited. Welcome in. If he's got some koala, ooh, a koala would be a good idea too. Some koala emojis, Tara's so cute, thank you. Okay, so I've left like a nice open curve. I haven't really completed it. If you have completed it all the way up, that's no problem, but we are putting the head here. So that's why I left a little bit of a gap. The head is just going to be a nice oval shape, just applying that anywhere kind of near the top of this curve. So the curve is going to meet maybe like the bottom half here. And we have a nice big head like this, a nice kind of oval. Oval shaped head. That's quite the round circle. I'm gonna make that a little more oval. I made it more oval this way. So you can see how the oval is standing up rather than side to side. So I'm trying my best to replicate that here. And again, if you need to overlap a little bit, that's no problem. That's the whole idea with the white paint. You can kind of change it as you go. Again, you're using white, I'm using green, just so you can see. How many times will I say it? Keep track. Keep track if you feel like it. <laughs> Artana, yes, I love koala. Yeah, that's a great idea for you. You were saying how to change it up. Fits with the nice kind of jungly theme too and kind of hanging around and all the rest of it. So I think that was a great idea. Okay, just to continue the shape of the sloth, we kind of have the whole body and the whole area of the sloth, but just to kind of help you see the whole shape before we go in with brown, um, I'm gonna do my nice arm that wraps around. So I'm gonna start anywhere kind of like right in the middle of the body, I would say maybe right around there. And I'm doing a nice kind of curve up. You're overlapping the branch and then you're curving back down like we did over here. So you're going across the branch and then you're curving around stopping at the top of the branch because the arm is going over and hiding. So this is this part right here. If you want, you can do the other side of the arm just so you can visualize a little bit more. The arm is very tucked in, it's very close. It's very snuggled up on the branch. Oh, no, Brittany. Um, if you'd rather just go in with your paints and like do it, if that's what you're saying, that might be nice as well. I personally really like sketching it out, but if it's not working, you can always just go in with your paint colors. I'll be sketching it out for another like couple minutes, but no worries. And like cover things if you need to, too, as long as you're using that white. Uh, I'm just going to throw in this little paw here. It's just kind of like the other arm, I think, kind of curling over. So I'm just starting along the top edge of the branch here, just a little bit beside that first arm. And it's kind of the same idea. I start by staying at the top of the branch. I curve around and this paw is going to overlap. So I'm just kind of curving around overlapping. And it's just going to stop right around there. It just kind of clutches on. You'll see his little claws later on. We don't need to add those details. This is just to show the shape of the sloth really for spatial reasons for the leaves as well. We're getting a little detailed with it just to kind of see the whole thing put together, I guess. And I guess one last detail, just if it helps you see the whole sloth so you're comfortable with the shape and to see if you want to change anything up uh, size wise, you can throw one more curve right about there. So it's just starting kind of right underneath that little curve that we started with. It comes down like that. So it's just showing where the leg is in comparison to where the belly and the rest of the body is. And again, this is very easy to change up later. This is more so just to show you how the shape is looking. If you're happy with the shape or if you want to make it big or smaller, it's a good thing to do right now, just as you can see the overall shape. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm just giving a quick uh, half minute here just so you can see the sloth shape. I'm comparing it to this one so you can really see them both together. And then we can throw on just a few like basic shapes for the leaves and then we're going to pretty them up a little bit. And keep in mind, as I always say, you can change things up, okay? So if you're not liking my leaf types or maybe you like one or two of them and you just wanna repeat them or add more or less, feel free to do that. I'll try my best to keep it as close as possible to the original, but I always encourage some creativity if you wish, if it strikes you. Oh, no worries, Brittany, no worries. I'll be spending a while sketching too, so no problem. You know how it goes. If you have any questions, if I can help you catch up, just let me know at any time. All right, so again, just to clarify, I still um, recommend using a nice white just to make sure that uh, when you're doing these leaves, you can change them up a little easier if you wish. I'm continuing to use light green just so you can see. I'm gonna start with what I think are the banana leaves. <laughs> these guys here, they're a little more simple in my opinion. They're just kind of nice curvy shapes. There's a little bit of a wave or a bump along the edges and they come to a nice rounded tip, just very big. Uh, so I put one in the bottom left hand corner. So as I described, I'm gonna do a little like curvy with my brush and kind of waving it up and down as I go to the end of the leaf. And then I'll curve around and come right back, doing a few little curves as I go. In, uh, in total, I guess, uh, we have a wider start and a thinner uh, tip there. So just make sure you're having that width kind of at the base of the leaf here. And then at the tip, it gets a lot thinner, of course. So just make sure you're generally doing that. It can kind of change as it goes with the wave. But as long as it goes from wide to thin for the most part, that's what you're looking for. So I've got one there. I've got one in the top right as well. Kind of like covering that right hand corner, a top right corner. So you can see what I did there. I just uh, wanted it maybe a little bit longer. So I just did a second, second sketch right on top. And now I know that I want, uh, yeah, I want the new sketch there. There we go. And you can do that at any time with your white paint. That's the whole point. Change it up as you go. So two little banana leaves. Um, I'll start, or I guess I'll begin, not begin, I'll continue. That's the word I'm looking for in continuing more leaves. Um, I've got these leaves here. They're similar to the banana leaf. The only difference I would say is they come to a tip here and they're a little less wavy on the edges. They're more of just a curve and a tip, curve and a tip. I've got one, I've got two. I'm gonna do two of everyone. I do, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna start uh, in the top left-hand area for this first one. So again, this one is just a curve coming out to a tip and then curve coming out to a tip. You can overlap if you need to. I'm trying to keep it a little separate just to keep it as close as possible to my original. But of course, if you overlap, that's no problem because the sloth can go right on top and kind of go in the foreground of all these things. So don't you worry. Mystic, thank you for your contribution. Welcome in. A little more curvy. You can see again, I do the same thing. I just change as I go. If I need to make anything different, I'm just putting a second or third sketch on top. I'm gonna do one of these leaves down here as well. So bottom right hand area, curve tip, curve tip. Some nice pointed tips for these ones. There we go. I'll call the rest on YouTube. Uh, time for Travis. Oh, Travis can go to bed. He says good night. Good night, Travis. Happy painting. Thanks so much. <laughs> it's always happy painting. Thank you. Have a good sleep. Oh, you're getting some of the chat saying good night to you as well. There you go. <laughs> Have fun. All right, so we got banana leaves. I would call these like the normal leaves, just the regular leaves that I'm used to, you're probably used to. Um, I'm sure they have a better name than normal, but anyway, these are the ones I'm most familiar with. 
Um, I'm gonna do what I think are the palm leaves next. So this one and this one, they're kind of like spiky, very large. And uh, yeah, so just grab a little more white on your brush. I'm using green again, just for visuals. I like to start with just a nice line coming out from where I want the palm leaf to be. <laughs> and then what I do is I just uh, add some more straight lines coming in to the middle here. They're all kind of curved. I wouldn't really say they get shorter or longer as they go down, they just kind of curve into the existing line. I try and put them nice and close together as well because the idea is that they're all separated at the ends but as they get closer to the middle they should all be combining together a little bit more. So you have a nice solid shape all in here and then over on the edges is where all of the little bits of leaf kind of separate a little bit more. And again, this is only the sketch. We will clean this all up with some green later. If you're more comfortable, you think, just using green and just going right for it, you can always leave this or you can do it with green right now. But I'll be going in with a nice dark green as well to help clean it up. So again, it'll be nice and filled in here. It doesn't need to be filled in now, but just note we'll be filling it in more in the middle. And it'll be the edges that stay nice and separated. Uh, so pretty. Thank you, Rosio. Thank you so much. And you, hello. How are you? I forgot that today's Friday. Oh, no worries. It's hopefully it's a nice surprise. Like happy Friday. <laughs> Hope it's not so bad. I understand it's a little bit of a bummer to forget about the tutorial, but it's okay. It's Friday. It should be a good thing. It should be a good thing. I'm just doing a second palm leaf up here, everybody. So same thing, starting with a nice line. And then I start on the edges or on the tips, I should say, and bring them in, 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 in. I'm trying to grab more green so you can see me better. I'll do that again. So there's the line. In, 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 keeping them nice and tight together so they get nice and tight in the middle there. Two, three, all kind of curving into the middle, right? And again, we can figure out details in terms of filling in the middle a little bit later, but for now, that's what we've got there, just our nice base. Okay, just gonna give a quick uh, half minute to minute and then we'll get to our last leaf, uh, or not, it's not the last, the second last, because we have the vines there. Second last leaf, I believe it was called the Monstero, Monstera leaf, Monstero leaf. I believe, I believe. The fancy leaves. Waiting for my yellow to dry. Oh, okay. So I missed uh, Travis Tag and I. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> the sloth's butt would have been at the edge of the canvas when I tried sketching it and needed a facelift. Gotcha. <laughs> and that's why we use the white. If you need a facelift or you need to move the butt around, now you can do it. Now you can do it. Again, I'm glad you're uh, fixing that now rather than later. It's always better, I think, to fix it now just to kind of get the uh, the sketch right and then it's a little easier later on. Just taking a quick pause in case anyone's uh, filling up with their leaves there. I'll mix a little more green in the meantime. Yeah, these last leaves, they're, uh, they're a little more complicated for sure compared to all the other ones. So just so everyone knows that, a little more of a challenge, but I think they look pretty cool. I'll get you through them. Um, I guess another thing that I haven't been doing, but you could be doing if you want, um, is actually twisting the canvas around as you do these. Um, sometimes when I'm doing leaves, sometimes like thinking of them at an angle or coming down really messes with my brain a lot. So I'll just keep twisting the canvas around so I can do them all facing up or facing the side or whatever I'm feeling that way. I know when I was designing this painting on Twitch, I was doing that all the time. I was flipping my canvas halfway, quarter way, all the way around. Just, uh, <laughs> I think I was wanting to have the leaves kind of right side up like this. So I kept painting like this and then I would switch around and then I would switch around. So feel free to twist the canvas around if you're having trouble with uh, kind of directions and things. Sometimes that'll help. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, Elizabeth, nice and simple. I love it. Thank you. I'm glad you're finding it nice and uh, nice and easy. You know, because slots and animals in general can be a little bit intimidating, but that was really my goal, is to make it uh, attainable, cute, um, you know, not like cutting corners or anything, but still not too, too hard, you know? Uh, Sophie, can we post pictures of our paintings? Yes, definitely. Um, I always recommend when you're done, uh, you can go to the Facebook event page. Uh, so probably the one that you RSVP to, it's just in the events section on Facebook. Uh, right now it's not open for posting, so if you're all finished you won't be able to post there unfortunately quite yet. But what I do is I open it back up for posting uh, right after the tutorial ends. So you can watch out right after I end the tutorial and it'll be open for you and everyone else to post their beautiful photos. Kelly, thank you for giving us your guidance for me. You're very welcome. You're very welcome, Kelly. Glad you're enjoying. I was trying to sketch those last leaves today. Did bad, so glad you're going to show us. Oh, yes, Kays, yes. I show everything and anything in this painting. Decided to sketch with my pencil. Yeah, pencils work too. Chalk, a lot of people use chalk as well. A little easier to wipe away and things. So all of the above are good. Okay, so this last leaf, again, Monstera, I think. Um, I'm actually going to do the whole canvas slip for it because I, yeah, doing this upside down just boggles my mind. I like to think of it as this way, kind of right side up. So I'm going to do the top one first and then I'll flip it around to do the second. Now our sloth is uh, hanging the other way. <laughs> I'm going to switch this so you can see as well, so you can really compare the same way. So yeah, I like to do these um, kind of facing up, facing, yeah, up there. I like to start at the tip and then I kind of work my way down with all of these little pieces of the leaf here. So the top here, it's pretty much just our normal leaf, maybe a little curvier, but it pretty much starts with a tip, a nice big curve, and then you just kind of come down. So you're just doing a small version of what I would call the normal leaf here, maybe a little more round, a little more like bulbous in a way. It's not quite a casual curve. It's a little more of a very rounded curve. So you can st uh, start wherever you want the leaf to end here, wherever the tip is. And again, starting with a nice curve, nice curve there, nice curve there. So kind of like round, it's again, very round compared to this one here. Similar, and then it comes to a tip and it has the curves. I'm starting with a small little bit here. It's just the very top of the leaf. Just making it a little more even. Da, 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 da. Cindy, hey tribe, hey Cindy, how's it going? How are you today? Just in the middle of our toot. Little tutorial. How have you been? All right, so we've got the top here. Now what we do is we kind of do some curves out and back in while also keeping in mind the gaps. That's kind of the hardest part is kind of thinking about all of this at once. You want to do a nice curve up and out, down and back in, and then you do a quick little circle around and you go the same thing again, a little longer, the same thing again, a little longer, while again trying to keep in mind that you want to keep gaps in between all of those pieces of the leaf. So you can watch nice and slow as I do it. So I'm starting at the bottom here where my little uh, original leaf shape ended off. I'm doing a quick little curve around so that I can leave a nice gap. I'm gonna curve up like this, leaving a tip curving back down and in. So that's like one little arm of the leaf. Again, doing a nice curve to make sure I'm leaving a gap. I'm going to curve back up like this, you're kind of hugging nice and close to the last curve, leaving a tip, coming back down to the middle. Same thing, another curve. Again, these curves are just to really help you with keeping a gap, right? You want to do a nice big curve so there's a nice big opening. Curving up, very tight to the last one, leaving a tip, coming back down. I think I'll fit one more in there something like that. And that's one whole side. I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. It's the same thing, just reverse in terms of the curve. Curling around. Coming up, leaving a tip, coming back in. 
you're coming like close to the middle. If the middle's right here, you can see you're leaving maybe a little bit of a gap, but you're coming back to the middle area. Curving around, coming up, back down. I'm doing a little bit of an overlap, it's no problem. I tried to keep these nice and separate on my original, but I'll just make sure I choose which one is in the foreground later on and I'll overlap the way I want. I'd rather do that rather than botching my leaf, you know? I don't want to alter the whole shape of my leaf just because there's another one close by. So there's that one there. I'll probably put my little palm leaf on top personally. So if you need to see that again, I am doing it a second time. I'm just flipping my canvas back over to the original position. That was the upside down position. I think it looks cuter already upside down, crazy, that's funny. I loved seeing all the different angles when I was making this online as well. I loved, uh, yeah, moving around. He's kind of like climbing up a branch this way, for example. He's uh, It kind of works all ways. You can flip him around throughout the year if you want <laughs> when you hang him up. So if you need to see that again, I'll do this again. So starting at a tip, I'm starting with a nice kind of round, what I call normal leaf on the top there. So curving around and up, tip, around and up, tip, come back down. And I'm making this one, of course, a little smaller just because of the room on my canvas here. There's not a whole lot of room left. But you can, of course, alter sizes whenever and wherever you like. This one as well, combined a little with my palm leaf, but that's not a big problem. I'll just leave it there. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this one down here so you can see a full view of what I have in terms of the sketch because that's pretty much all the sketching I'm doing. I know I have the vines left, but I didn't sketch in the vines beforehand. I just kind of added those right on top. So I don't think it's really necessary to sketch those in. If you would like to, uh, you're more than welcome to, but uh, I found it not as necessary to sketch those in because they just kind of overlap right on top, kind of curl around. It's not that big a deal to sketch in my opinion. Uh, I'm just fine. Long day riding to the beach, but I'm not complaining. Yeah, I would not complain either. That sounds like a good day, Cindy. <laughs> nice relaxing evening now, hopefully too. Again, welcome in. I'm glad you're here. Stupid yellow won't dry. Um, you could probably put the white lines on top of the semi-wet yellow, Brittany, unless it's really causing you issues, but um, I find it won't, uh, yeah, it won't really affect it in a whole lot, a whole lot. It'll probably mix with your white as you go along. Uh, but yeah, as long as it's not totally messing with your sketch, you should be okay. Uh, Elizabeth, an inspiration for real. Thank you. Uh, Amy, will this video be available later? Yes, it will. Uh, this video along with all videos, they all go on my YouTube page. So youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. Uh, you can see all of my past tutorials there. I actually just uploaded the, uh, the rainbow wave one today. Um, so that's there now. Uh, you'll notice it was gone from Facebook. That's because it's now on YouTube. Uh, Amy, if you're looking to paint this immediately after I'm done, it'll stay on, uh, on Facebook and on Twitch for a limited time. But once it is moved, it moves to YouTube forever. It doesn't disappear from there. Mocap, welcome in. Nice to see you again. Hello. What a treat. Two times in one day. Hope you're well, hope you're well. <laughs> oh, I'm penciling it in, won't grab the pen. Oh, right, 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 right. I forgot you're using your pencil. Yes, that makes total sense now. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, hair dryer time perhaps? <laughs> I've done it recently. I've done it recently where I whipped out the hair dryer. No shame, whatever works. But yes, Amy and anyone else, if uh, you need clarifications on YouTube or anything, let me know. But youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. I sketched it, Aaron. It doesn't look too bad. Great. You made it so easy. Thank you. Thank you, Kays. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, Charlene, it will be a little tough, but at least, um, again, at least it's just a nice little practice round. I mean, if in the end you don't end up, if you don't end up, excuse me, using the lines a whole lot, then that's okay. That's all right. You can just kind of paint your leaves right on top wherever you need to. It's more so just practice and again, making sure everything's like spaced out the way you want, I guess. Celine, hello, I saw the scarecrow painting. Oh, yes, is that a sneak peek to a future painting? Yes, it is coming up. Uh, I believe it'll be next Friday. So if you're interested in that, just watch out for next Friday. Um, I'll probably be posting the Facebook event up tomorrow or something just so people can plan ahead. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it though, Celine. I was very excited about it. 
It was a lot of fun to make today. Okay, so we should have pretty much all of that sketched on. If you're still working on a few things, of course, just keep taking your time. Um, I think what we'll do, yes, we will start with the nice brown branch. We wanna put that branch on first, and then that way we can let it dry before putting the sloth on, because you can see the sloth will overlap. So let's uh, keep using our medium round brush. You can wash it off whenever you're ready. If you have like a bunch of white on it, for example, you might wanna just wash it off to keep it a little cleaner. And I'll be mixing a nice dark brown. I'll tell you in a quick second. <laughs> just pouring my paint. out of anywhere yep that's fine all right so we're gonna make a nice deep dark brown to begin with we have a lot of like medium to lighter browns for the sloth so we want to make sure that we have a nice deep brown for the branch itself so I'll be using three different paint colors for brown if you have a nice deep brown already you can just use that as is but I'm going to be mixing because I use my usual five paint colors and they do not include brown unfortunately so <laughs> go into my plate here and I'm going to mix red and yellow together so red and yellow, even amounts, and that should make a nice orange color. This thing's getting heavy. Red and yellow for orange. And then to that, you're adding black paint. So between red, yellow, and black, you should get a nice dark brown. If you ever get something that doesn't look quite like brown, maybe it looks kind of like yellow toned, almost like a like a gross kind of puke color. I know it's gross, but it's true. It might look kind of pukey. Mine actually does right now. Um, the way to counter that would be adding more red and maybe a little more black as well. So kind of like warming it up. Think of it like you're warming it up. A little more kind of chocolatey warm brown. And I find that's the most common. I find, um, Instead of doing equal amounts, some people tend to throw in a little extra yellow in there because they're looking for a bright orange, when in reality you should be making more of a fiery orange to begin with, so it'll look almost like a red orange, even though it's even amounts of red and yellow. But yes, as a result, you might need to go back in and re-add some red in there. And again, black if you need to keep darkening it up. And if you're not sure how it's looking, just touch a little on your canvas. See how it's looking? Sometimes on the plate, it can be a little deceptive compared to all the other colors you have kind of swirling around. So throw some on, just see how it looks. But whenever you're ready, you can start to fill in your branch. And you can overlap the sloth, of course. You can still see kind of the outline where the legs are, where the arms are. So just to make sure you're not leaving any gaps, I think it's pretty safe to just go right on top the light brown will go on top of the dark brown once it's dry. You can see I'm purposely trying to wave my brush a little as I go along. I kind of like the idea of a nice kind of wavy branch. You know, it's not perfectly straight. It's a little bit kind of textured. Some nice like, wavy bark on there. Uh, one thing I am doing though is I am trying to keep the branch maybe a little wider here and then a little thinner as it goes along, just as branches do. They get thinner as they get further out. So I'm trying to show that just a little bit here. It doesn't need to be significant, but enough that you can kind of see it getting thinner. So again, don't worry about overlapping. You can still see a nice general shape of the sloth. We put in all that hard work, we can still see it. This is just going to help with uh, preventing any gaps from forming. All right, so it's going right across the canvas now. Krithi, can we add green? You sure can, yeah. Um, I'll be doing green on the leaves actually next. What I do is I do the branch first and then I go to the leaves and then I go back to the sloth. But yeah, if you're ready to add green, you certainly can. Or if you're asking just to add green anywhere else, you can, yes. You can do whatever you want. There's no rules, there's no rules. I can't see what you're doing. And even if I could, if I saw you were doing something different, I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> 
I enjoy people customizing, so please go ahead and customize. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Brittany, I read that. Looking like a different kind of leaf, huh? That's okay. <laughs> Whatever you think. You have the funniest uh, little instances in your paintings, huh? Again, helps me visualize. Was it this one or maybe that one? I bet it was one of these guys. That's funny. A little too spiky. Do it again or keep it. Who knows? Whatever you like. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. My sloth is not a good sloth. <laughs> oh boy. He's a little troublemaker sloth, huh? That's funny. See mom, welcome in. Hello. I saw you streaming a lot today. It was during my streams, unfortunately, so I couldn't come say hi, but I kept getting some email notifs saying you were streaming. How'd your streams go today? That's true, Grok. There's no part of the jungle that looks like the other. That's great. Yes, thanks for shouting him out. That was super fun. That's good. What were you up to? What were you playing? More WoW? More WoW? Bob quote. If you do too much, it's going to lose its effectiveness. Oh, that's a new one, too. I wonder what the new Bob quotes today. They're great. All right, guys, I'm going to move on to filling in the leaves now. So I'll just kind of talk about them a little bit and then we can do them all together. Um, I do slightly different things in each type of leaf. I kept it consistent if it was the same type, of course, but you can see how they all kind of differ. Um, let's start with the palm leaves. I would say they're easiest. You can see there's just one shade of green in there. I don't do any streaking, any blending or whatnot. So let's just start with those. Um, I use a lighter green for those ones, uh, kind of like a light to medium, I would say. Uh, I continue to use the medium round brush. So you can keep using that. And I would go to your plate and I would mix yellow with a little bit of blue, if you're mixing green. If you have green already made, um, to lighten it up, I would use a little bit of extra yellow in it, or even a little extra white is fine as well. But the idea is we're going for a nice light to medium green. So again, if I didn't clarify for those mixing with yellow and blue, use lots of yellow, a little bit of blue. I'm not sure if I said that, so I just wanted to be sure. Lots of yellow and a little bit of blue. And that way you get more of a lime green or medium kind of bright green. It was my goal to kind of make all the leaves, of course, a little different, even not just shape, but kind of filling them in with different tones and different shades of green. So we're starting with a nice light one. Case. Oh, I love world. Oh, yes. Talk to talk to HSM Truman there in chat. He was playing WoW yesterday. Maybe today. Not sure. We'll actually show him. Yeah, more WoW. Yeah, see you were today. There you go. On my four. Yes, he was telling me about all his hours. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so I've got a nice light to medium green. Again, anything just kind of limeier or a little brighter in the medium tone is fine. And all you're doing now is you're just overlapping what you've already done. So again, in this painting. A lot of the work goes into kind of sketching things out, planning things out. Now you're just kind of using color to overlap and to make it kind of prettier. So you can go a little slower now, a little cleaner with your brush strokes, using just a little bit of pressure at the start, continuing pressure as you move in, that way you get thicker lines. Just overlapping. You can see how it just brightens it right up, makes it more like a nice palm leaf. There we go. So you can see how all of these little pieces are very far apart. Not very far apart. There's gaps in them on the outsides. And then as they get further in, they're all nice and tight together. Again, alter as you go. If you need to make any longer, go ahead. Because you can see what they do. All these little tips, they make a little bit of a leaf shape. They kind of come out and around like that. So if you need to alter the tips a little bit, if you need to like make any a little bigger, a little longer, you can do that nice and easy. Just going along the, oh, that was a little too much blue. Look at that, whoopsie daisy. Probably just wasn't looking on my plate when I refilled my brush, that happens. I'm just gonna blend that out, it's a little dark. There we go, get that in there. All right, so again, I'll just point out again how much that filled up, especially in the middle, lots and lots of green in there. It's really just the ends that you see all the nice palm leaf shape with. Mm-hmm, yes, please go follow. Yes, yes, yes. 
And good news, he streams a lot. <laughs> so if you want some just regular hour <laughs> World of Warcraft content or gaming content, he plays lots of different games. He's your guy, he's your guy. Insane hours, that man. Sleep, sleep, please. <laughs> Make sure you're sleeping. But I won't tell you what to do. Do whatever you want. <laughs> just stay healthy. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm just moving on to the other palm leaf here. You can see I flipped my canvas. That's what I'm going to start to do as I clean up these leaves here. Same thing, just using the tip of my brush, a little bit of pressure, curving in, and using more pressure to make it nice and thick as it comes to the center there. Oh, anytime. It's true, though. <laughs> They're always entertaining. You're streaming a lot. As long as you're healthy, I'm fine. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. It's up to you. Good music, too. Good tunes on his channel. So I got two palm leaves. Yay! I'll just leave a quick minute if you're still adding yours. Maybe I'll flip this back to the uh, proper way, even though People said they liked the cute sloth on the top. <laughs> who knows? Maybe you'll make it like me and then you'll start to flip it around and hang in a different way. Who knows? Who knows? Lots of options. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hope it's all turning out for everyone so far. I haven't heard a lot of comments recently. That's usually a good thing. Usually means you're happily painting, no issues, but please let me know if you have questions. Just gonna show you what's coming up here. So satisfying to fill these in just one at a time. In my opinion, I love the idea of just going around, getting one thing done at a time. You see all the empty space right now. We're gonna go boom, 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 boom. Get it all done. Mm, it was lots of yellow and just a teeny bit of blue, Brittany. Just a teeny bit. Baby food peas. Oh no! <laughs> Baby food peas. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Can't say I'm familiar. Um, maybe a touch more blue? I would guess maybe it's like a little too light if you're seeing that. I would think it's maybe a little too light. So try, uh, try just a teeny bit more blue. You could also try, Brittany, adding a little bit of white in there. The white will make it a little less bright. Uh, but it'll kind of change the tone even more too. So you can you can experiment with white too if you're not liking the yellow blue combo. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next leaf, everyone. I'm gonna do the, the uh, banana leaf. I think it's the banana leaf. Yes. <laughs> no one's correcting me, so I'll keep calling it the banana leaf. This one and that one. Uh, I'm going with this one next because we use the same color as the base, and then what we're going to do is we're gonna stack on a darker green to give it a little bit more detail. So you can keep using the exact same brush and the exact same color, a nice light green. Lots of yellow, a little bit of blue is what I used. And I'm gonna do one leaf at a time. Actually, no, I'm not, I'm doing both. I'm getting confused with other leaves here. I'm first filling in the whole entire leaf with a nice light green. So again, if you need to reshape anything, you can now use your light green to reshape or to clean anything up, get some nice kind of like clean edges all the way around. Just take your time with it now that you're using green rather than white. More of your solid color. And sorry, I did correct myself. I'll be doing kind of each leaf back and forth a little bit. So we're doing this lime green layer. When I've got it on this one, I'm gonna do it on this one as well. So just using that same color, lime green, filling in that leaf. Okay, maybe a little more paint there. 
Uh, I find my yellow can be very transparent. I know I've talked about this before, but I'll continue to mention it. My yellow paint tends to be transparent. So if you see mine a little streaky, that's why. Um, if you'd like to prevent that from happening, if yours is doing the same thing, I was just talking to Brittany about white paint. White paint will help reduce the streaks. It really helps kind of solidify the paint a little bit more, makes it a little more opaque. So try that if you're having issues with uh, the transparency of your yellow or in turn your light green, because it's mostly yellow, right? Apparently I've forgotten how to make green. Oh, <laughs> lots of yellow, a little blue. But again, the white, the white might help you too, Brittany. It depends on what blue you're using. It might kind of create a different tone. So if that's the issue again, white might, might change things up a little bit. Oh, Kaleva, welcome back. <laughs> yes, the account switch. Uh, just saying hello. No worries, gonna try tomorrow. Uh, too late to begin now. No, no worries, just a little tired. It's Friday night. If you wanna relax, it's totally fine. Can paint tomorrow. Uh, my white shows through the leaves. Okay, so yeah, Leanne. Um, that's like what I was in the middle of explaining there. My yellow, it might be your yellow too. The yellow's like a little transparent. So when you're using mostly yellow with a little bit of blue for green, it might be a little transparent. You can see mine is too. Um, so try adding just a little bit of white into your green mixture and then pop it on top and see what happens. I think it'll fix, but please let me know if it doesn't and I'll try and give you some more suggestions. Nothing is helping. This is fine as I sit with nothing being fine. Oh no! What, uh, do you have the phthalo blue, Brittany? Because sometimes the blue can really alter how the green is looking. Just so you know, like, so just, it might not look exactly like my green is all I'm saying, depending on the blue you have. Let's see here. Just gonna lay this here so we can compare these two leaves. Please stay, very good. All right, so you can see the second uh, second step to the banana leaf here is adding some kind of medium to dark green lines just to give it a little bit of, um, yeah, some ridges there, some shading and all the rest of that. So I'm gonna keep using my medium round brush at this point. Look at that lighting, it's a lot better now. That's great, that's great. Uh, medium round brush, and I'm mixing together what I would call more of a medium green. I wouldn't call it a dark green. You can see very dark green over here. I would call this more of just a regular medium green. So if you're mixing a new green, you can use maybe equal amounts yellow and blue. If you want to mix into your previous green, you can just add a tiny bit of blue. That would work as well. Just to darken it up just a, just a little bit. Um, I like to start by doing a quick little line coming through the middle here. So just a nice curved line. So I'm just using my tip of my brush. I'm going to start near the tip of the leaf. Do kind of like a quick curve, just kind of curving with the leaf there right in the middle. And then all you need to do is just create some lines and all of the lines are different. You can see I have some thin lines, some thick lines. So you can use the tip of the brush to do some thin lines kind of coming from the middle out. They're all coming at an angle I should specify as well. So rather than straight out from the line, you're going kind of up at an angle. But yeah, play with the thickness. So you can see I'll press maybe a little harder and do a couple thick lines all together to do a nice, just thick line in total. Maybe another thin one. It's all very random. I'm not following a pattern of any kind. Just trying to get lots of different, different strokes on here just to fill in the rest of this leaf. Couple thick ones, couple thin ones. You can go right up to the top here and just spray on a couple of these. And then you're gonna angle them up going the other way on the left-hand side here. So going kind of up away from that middle line. Great painting set. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, leaving a middle by for now. Oh, no worries, no worries. Have a good rest of your evening or morning, depending on where you are. And uh, yeah, if you wanna catch the rest, it'll be on YouTube very, very soon. Uh, okay, fixed it, fixed it by, I mean, ran and grabbed. Oh, premix fluorescent, excellent. I mean, whatever works, whatever works. Hey, it's Pink Whitney, new name, new name. Hi, all my internet keeps cutting in and out, but I love the painting just watching for tonight. No worries, you're always welcome to. No problem, yeah, whatever works for you. It's all good. Nice name change. <laughs> all right, so that's one, and then I'm just gonna do the other one the exact same way. 
So I'm going to put this down just because we saw the comparison there. Let's flip this around. And I'm just doing the same thing. I'm starting with a nice thin kind of curved line coming down just to show where the middle is. And again, using either thin lines or thick lines just coming from the middle to the outside. Yeah, I like these banana leaves. They're fun that way. You just, uh, again, you don't really need to think about patterns here. Just kind of putting all these leaves or these lines rather kind of close together, just filling up the space however you want. Whatever pattern you wish. Lots of thick ones, lots of thin ones, whatever you need. Aha! <laughs> Okay, and there is technically one more step to these leaves, but I'm leaving it for a bit because what I do is I do that same step on a lot of the other leaves. The last step, just so anyone knows, or if anyone's curious, I should say, is adding a little bit of a very light green kind of in the middle here, um, just a little on them, yeah, on the insides here, kind of sprawling out. You can see it in there. And I do that for this leaf, I do it for this leaf. So it's a little easier for us just to leave it until a little later. I'll leave a quick half minute if you're still adding. We can move on to another leaf. Oh yes, first leaf. Um, yes. So that was using a light green, Brittany. So lots of yellow, little blue, but it sounds like you got your fluorescent. Uh, and I'm using the medium brush. And I like to just kind of use the tip very softly at the start. And then what I do is I pull down and increase pressure to get kind of thicker lines as I move in. And I guess you're starting with a line first. So you're starting with like kind of the middle line there and then going from the inside in, or the outside in outside in outside in mm -hmm. what shall we do next i think we'll do the normal leaves next <laughs> the regular leaves <laughs> that's how I, I just they're just leaves they're just the leaves i know <laughs> so they're normal regular leaves today All right, so just to see those, I'm gonna once again pop this up. We can have a quick comparison as we do the first leaf. These ones, they're now getting a little bit darker. I like to use more of a medium green to begin with and then a nice dark green along the edges. So we're starting with kind of the medium green that we were just using. So you can grab the same brush and I'm just grabbing more of that same green. Again, I describe it as a medium green, just anywhere in the middle. It's not super light, it's not super dark, it's just right. And you can start by filling in the whole leaf. So same thing, if you need to take a little more time just to really shape it out, get it the shape you want, then take that extra minute or so. Nice clean edges everywhere. And you can fill it in. And if I didn't say it before, I mean, if you kind of uh, get the process here if you like, uh, if you kind of see the leaves and you feel like you know how to fill them in, because it is very, it's it's a little repetitive, like maybe this leaf to this leaf, for example, you can go at your own pace. If you want to keep going, it's totally fine. But I'm just doing my best to get all of them in here, all of them nicely explained for you. I'm just gonna remove the original so I can do my second leaf, which is down here. It's a little hidden. And again, if you happen to overlap your sloth a little bit, it's no big deal. Having so much fun, Miriam, I'm so glad. And then you follow up by saying I'm making such a mess. <laughs> as long as you're having fun, that is more important than the mess in my opinion. I'm always making a nice big mess when I paint, so don't you worry. 
My hand's already a little bit of a mess. It'll get messier, I'm sure. So I've got that medium green on the base. Again, I'll give you a quick minute if you're still adding that. Which one? Oh, the palm? I think it can be a little tricky. Don't be too hard on yourself. I think these ones are a little easier, like the normal ones that I'm doing, unless you're starting with the normal one. But if you're starting with the palm, I think it can be a little tricky just like looking from the edges here, kind of getting the shape overall. Just uh, try your best to look at the outside edge and make sure it's kind of curving in, curving out, just by the lengths of all these little spikes here. Okay. So again, as a review, as a reminder, for this leaf here, I take some dark green and I'm gonna to start to, first of all, kind of curve around the whole shape, but then start to bring in some dark green just in little kind of streaks and spikes here. So I've taken my medium round brush. I've just mixed a nice dark green on my plate here. So just lots of blue, little bit of yellow this time. So it's a nice deep dark green. You can start if you want by outlining your leaf. Oh, that's pretty minimal. You can't see that a whole lot there. I'll try and darken up even more. Not a big contrast on mine personally, but you can still see it there. It's overlapping, it's outlining. And then what I do is, it's kind of similar to the banana leaf in terms of the um, streaks, I guess. We're just kind of streaking in at an angle. If it does help you, you can do a little vein in the middle there, just a little line. But yeah, I'm just kind of pulling from the outside in this time. So doing going at an angle, kind of coming down into the middle. And I'm trying to leave a little more of a bright center. So just brushing with the tip of my brush, kind of pulling in and allowing some of the center to stay there. Uh, and then, yes, down this way. So again, angles are tough, tough for me sometimes. I'm gonna flip it this way, have a better look. There we go. So the dark outside and the lighter middle. Again, we will add an even lighter color to the center a little later, but for now we're just keeping it as is. I'm gonna flip this again, going over here. Again, you can add that center if you wish. I will be overlapping with it with the nice light green, but if you need it for now, that's fine. I use this dark green to outline. And then you're pulling in at an angle, so kind of angling down into the middle. There we go. And around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. There we go. It makes it just look nice and shaded on the outside while having a nice bright center. Coming together. Hee hee hee, Miriam's having a good time. She's hee hee heeing over there. Okay, I'm gonna flip this around. You can have a look. We've got the Monstera, I believe. Yes, <laughs> coming up soon. That'll be next, another half minute. I'll just give in case you're working on those leaves. So for the Monstera leaf, we'll be using a very light green and a really dark green, just so you know that. Oops. So I'm just prepping a light green on my plate here because I have my dark green already from that last step. But same brush as usual. And again, uh, feel free to switch up your brushes too if you need to, if you want to use like a smaller brush here and there but I do like this one to keep things nice and smooth. Oh, Cindy, thank you so much for hosting the sloth. Oh, you're very welcome. And I'll see you next week, Cindy. I'm glad you enjoyed. Sounds like you did. Okay, so again, Monstera leaf, I believe. <laughs> what we're doing is we're just filling this in with light green to begin with. So again, use that light green to reshape anything that maybe you wanted to alter.
and I'll fill in both. Again, you can see there's a little bit of an outline on mine just because I used a dark green, or not a dark green, I used a lighter green to uh, outline when I was teaching the steps of how to make the leaves. But that'll be soon covered up because we had dark green on the outside anyway, so it's not a big deal. Again, you probably won't have that problem because you were using a white, presumably. You caught it, Allie, you caught it. Sometimes I sing along to a little song with some lyrics and see if people catch it. You got it. I think it's an M yeah, I think it's Eminem. Around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. I couldn't tell you the rest of the song, but I remember that part of it anyway. <laughs> you got it. Oh, yeah, I got it too. There you go, there you go. Sometimes I just can't help myself if there's a little string of words that happen to be lyrics, I start to just go off a little bit. Yeah, what song? Do you guys know what song that is? I couldn't tell you the rest of it. Da -da 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 -da. Maybe? Uh, I can't. I can't picture it. Can't. Can't hear it. It was probably from one of those much dance CDs, you know? So <laughs> I have it ingrained in my brain. <laughs> much dance 1998 type thing. Much dance 2001 something like that so again light green and the monstera leaves this one got real big <laughs> that's okay though they're always gonna be a little bit different yeah me too ali i know the tune but that's about it yes that's my level as well i couldn't tell you the rest of the song and i feel like that's not even the chorus i think that's just like a bridge of some kind or just a small part of the song. Anyway, it's the one that stuck with me anyway. Okay, so uh, this is similar to this leaf in that we're doing a nice dark outside and leaving the middle nice and light. So now what I've done is I've taken the nice medium round brush and I'm gonna just start kind of at the tips of any of these pieces of the leaf. I'm just kind of lightly brush it into the leaf. So I'm just kind of using a little bit more pressure at the start and then kind of flicking in like this so that it kind of feathers in a little bit more. You're not really bringing it all the way in, you're just kind of flicking it in so it mixes a little bit and just kind of blends out as it goes. So starting on the top there, you can do some at the very tips of these little pieces. It's weird, like I want to call these branches or leaves, but it's all one leaf. They're just kind of pieces of the leaf. So yeah, little arms almost of the leaf. I don't know what else to call them. They do look like arms. They look like they're kind of saying, hooray! But yeah, just kind of lightly feathering or flicking into the middles there so the middle stays nice and nice and bright, but you still have a nice transition from dark to light. I am going to overlap this little palm here. Sorry, palm, you're in the background now. But you can see how it gives it a little more depth, a little more detail, just by flicking on some of that darker green on the outside. You can kind of rotate maybe around these little inside pockets as well. Just give them a little more shape. Anything just to kind of help shape out this leaf is good. There's some there. And again, it's really up to you. If you want to keep flicking in a little bit, maybe adding just a little bit of darkness further in, you can. But I try and keep the middle nice and light and soft. Farida, hello. Good day. Good day. Oh, we got a few people. Leanne says Trailer Park Girls. Uh, and then Renee says Eminem, two Trailer Park Girls go around the outside, around the outside. You know your tunes. Look at that. <laughs> Allie, Anna, we got the name. Facebook knew it. Trailer Park Girls. <laughs> That's funny. Nice job, Renee, Leanne. You know your Eminem. I'm pretty good about mixing a lot of different songs together. <laughs> I see the song titles without me. Yeah, I, I didn't know it. Good job. <laughs> I was not meant to pay tonight. Oh, Brittany! If it's causing you that much trouble, maybe, yeah, maybe just say, if you're not meant to pay tonight, do it tomorrow, but keep trying as well. <laughs> I'm being a two in one. I know, Fridays and Sundays, it's like all day. I have a quick couple hour break and then I'm back in it. Guys, I have one more step for the dark green just before I move on to the next, uh, 
similar leaf here. I do do a little bit of a stem, so I just do a little bit of a stem like this, going right down the middle, and then I also do a couple lines kind of coming out to the arms. I'm gonna keep calling them arms. That's kind of what they look like to me. So a couple just quick curves coming kind of up the middles a little bit. Just again, kind of like veins. You can think of them as like the leaf veins, I would say. Just gonna do the same thing on the other side now. But yeah, Hempina, I'm on a lot if you haven't caught on. <laughs> I'm on a lot. So same thing, I'm just doing the exact same thing as the other leaf, starting on that top area, going on the tips of the little arms, bringing down some dark green. You can wrap around if you want, anything to help shape it all out, give it some depth and shadow. And then again, we do a little vein in the middle and then up the little arms. They can be just little brief ones like this. It doesn't need to be clean. It can be as clean or as messy as you want, I find. There we go. Okay, so our leaves are filled in. Uh, I did mention we have one more kind of detail to add to them, which I still do have. I have the nice, the nice light green, which I like to add to a lot of the centers of these leaves. So just know they're not completely done yet. Gonna f oh no, he is the right way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the light green's gonna give them a little bit of a lighter middle as well, just giving just to give some highlights and things. <laughs> I mean, that's a good storyline, Brittany. I always love the storylines you come up with. The leaves are not being co cooperative, so the sloth may have just eaten all of them. Fine. <laughs> he's uh, he's having a good nap after a nice long meal of leaves. I agree with it. I think it's fair. <laughs> I have a hard time with trees and leaves too. Branches took me so long, so long to get. Like any sort of thin line branch, just like years and years. <laughs> years and years. Leaves, trees, and mountains. Grr, they don't like me. Oh, mountains too. I have a hard time with Oh, I already read that. CJ, hello. Still haven't finished a painting they started a few weeks ago. That's the way it is. <laughs> That's the way it is. <laughs> Again, as long as you're enjoying it, I know you are. That's good. Love buns. Okay, so I'm gonna go on to, again, that nice light green. Light green, and I'm gonna be using a nice teeny tiny brush for these. So the light green, it really just kind of cleans up the middles a little bit of all of your, most of your leaves. I don't do it to every single one. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of like adding in a nice light green for the vein of the leaf, kind of brightening up the centers a little bit, and it just gives you an opportunity for more detail, right? Because it's the nice teeny tiny brush. So this light green, it's going to be a little different than the other light greens because you're kind of saying, hey, Aaron, didn't we just put light green in the banana leaf and in this uh, monstera leaf and all that? So how are we going to see the light green on top? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, this light green you will mix a tiny bit of white in there. If you've already done a light green with a little bit of white, because I know I said that was a solution if your light green is a little transparent, just add a little extra white to it, uh, just to make it nice and nice and pale. So it will give a different tone. It won't be kind. It won't be like a nice bright lime green that you might be used to. It's going to be more subdued, but I find that's perfect for what we're doing. So again, to mix this color, lots of yellow, little blue, and some white in there as well. Leanne says none of her leaves look like leaves. If you need any help, Leanne, let me know if there's any way. Um, I know it's a little hard to communicate over typing what might be going wrong, but Leanne, if you ever want to send me a photo of what you're doing, I can always check um, a little later and try and type out some suggestions for you. Or you can be like Brittany and say, hmm, my sloth ate my leaves. I think that's a really fun solution. Right now crocheting. Oh, the house, yes, the house hippo. Keep going. Clouds and trees and mountains for me. What's a house hippo? Oh my goodness. Yes, so, yes. Do as uh, Amethyst is saying there. <laughs> Have fun. Let me know what you think of the house hippo, Pink Whitney. All right, so I'm grabbing this very, very pale green. So again, that was lots of yellow, little blue, and some white in there. And I'll do this to a few leaves, but basically what I'm doing is I'm going over top of the vein so you get a little bit more of a bright kind of indent or vein, whatever you want to call this in the middle. 
and then you can also do a couple little spikes going outward. That'll just give a nice little light highlight in the middle. I'm actually going to lighten mine even more so you can see it and also so I can enjoy the nice bright green. I want it to be nice and bright compared to the other. There we go. So yeah, kind of flicking up into the existing lines, any gaps that you have, you can kind of flick up into them a bit. And just kind of using it to brighten up the middle. See? Not a huge difference, but I think a nice little detail there. You can see all those nice little light green veins there, just giving a nice little highlight. So banana leaf. I'm going to jump around to a few leaves here because I have all three here and then all three on the top. I do this to every leaf except for the palm leaf. So I'm going to go to this uh, Monstera leaf. <laughs> I feel like I always forget it for a brief second and then it comes right back to me. Uh, for this one, I'm just doing the veins in this color. So you're kind of overlapping the dark green a bit. You can keep a little bit of the dark green showing. It's kind of like you're doing a nice highlight and shadow. But I think more importantly, you have the highlight there. I think the highlight looks a little better as the veins, personally. So I'm just going on top and a little bit beside the dark green of those Monstera leaves. And then for the normal leaf, quote unquote normal leaf, it's pretty much the same as the banana leaf. I start with the little vein and then I'm just going to do a couple little light flicks kind of coming out. So again, you're just re-lightening that middle. Now you have lots of different tones of green in this leaf too. Mm-hmm, see that nice highlight there? Lovely, lovely. So I'm just gonna do the same thing on these leaves down here now. So yeah, again, up to you. I, I technically, I would say, um, try and go a little beside my dark green veins that I already have and then that way I have a little bit of both but if you'd rather just cover it up or just leave it without the light you can do that as well. I just like I just think the more the more shades the better you know it'll just give even more highlights even more low lights. There we go. Yeah, Pink Whitney, I'm curious what you think of the house hippo. Canadian, Canadian commercials, those used to play all the time. The commercial about the house hippo, any, any Canadians on, uh, I'm talking to Twitch right now just because Twitch asked about the house hippo, but Facebook as well. Do you remember those commercials from, uh, Concerned Children's Advertisers? They would play in like the 80s and 90s, I want to say 90s more so. And there was one about a house hippo. The mini house hippo that would roam around your house at night and eat the peanut butter. If anyone remembers, let us know. <laughs> it's been a large topic of conversation recently during my Twitch streams. <laughs> we watched a lot of those commercials all together and had some nice nostalgic feels together. The Canadian house hippo. Do, 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 do. Leaves done. Kit Kat, excellent. And they would eat chips. Yes, Tarjan, you're right. You're right. Cheap chips, and I, I remembered peanut butter more so. But you're right. Yeah, there was a little scene of him coming out of a chip bag, and he like swims around in the dog dish as well with the water. I thought it was so cute. And yes, we all wanted a house hippo. There you go. Sweet Mama remembers the house hippos. Yes. Thank you, Gurky. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Pink Whitney on Twitch said, is that also don't put it in your mouth? Yes, that is concerned children's advertisers. All of those, yes. Don't you put it in your mouth, don't you put it. If you remember that. Uh, Roth Tiger, thanks for the follow. My alerts are off because I'm doing a tutorial, but thank you very much. Um, yes, that was all concerned children's advertisers. That was the one I think that we most remember because of the, the tune. Don't you put it in your mouth. It's very catchy. It's very uh, hard to forget if you've ever heard it before. But yes, there were a ton of them. There were a ton of those little advertisements. There were some for, um, I would say like female empowerment. There was like a, a girls or girls type thing. There was a, uh, you know, be yourself type advertisement. They're all very wholesome and kind of like teaching kids to 
yeah, just, just some nice life lessons, but the house hippo one was, I think, the funniest one. <laughs> it was trying to teach children not to believe everything they see on TV. Um, wait, I'm sorry, Susan says they did a sequel to the house hippo. Susan, <laughs> can you describe this further if you have time? <laughs> I can look it up later. But I was looking up the house hippo to show people on my Twitch stream and I did not see a sequel to the house hippo. I would love to see that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, maybe like another animal, like similar message in terms of don't believe everything you see on TV, but maybe it wasn't a house hippo this time. I, I must know, I must know. Just giving an extra minute in case you're still doing leaves and then I'm getting to the sloth for ya. A sequel to the house hippo. Does everyone hear that? Twitch, you hear that? <laughs> There's a sequel. <laughs> CJ, are you aware? I don't remember this. That's really funny. And the joke Facebook, we were, because we were talking about this on Twitch earlier, the joke was that I think myself, I will admit it, I believed the house hippo existed. And I think many other children across Canada believed the house hippo existed because they saw that commercial and they stopped before the end, before it said the house hippo isn't a real thing. Please don't believe what you see on TV. And we all just kind of ran away saying, we want a house hippo. <laughs> Where are house hippos? We want to see some. <laughs> so there you go. Yes, Pink Whitney, please do. Atomic, welcome in. What? Did you miss the house hippo conversation? That was uh, yesterday and today. It was brought up again today. <laughs> Or sorry, two days ago, I guess. I wasn't streaming yesterday. Yes. With a pug? Like a second one? Yes, Atomic, if you want to go to YouTube, just type in House Hippo. <laughs> you can see what we were uh, taught as children in Canada. <laughs> see, sweet mama knows. Yeah. On YouTube, eh? Yes, just type in House Hippo. You'll find it. It's a nice little PSA... Uh, PSA. Tarjan, thank you! Hey! Again, my alerts are off, um, so it's not gonna give a little cute alert for you, but thank you so much anyway for the subscription on Twitch there. Thank you! Lots of hype! Sharon remembers the hippo! Yes! If you really- I, I think a lot of you maybe don't remember it too, and then if you see it on YouTube or see it in a video, you'll be like, oh yeah! The house hippo! It wanted to eat my chips and go in my peanut butter and swim around in the uh, in the dog dish. Yeah, I love the house hippo. Your roommate is from this timeline and we can't converse with them, CJ. <laughs> false, false, false. Your roommate didn't believe the house hippo existed. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring this up so we can give a little comparison as usual. So we got the leaves done. Oh, not that's a lie. We want to do the vines, but we're going to leave those for later because they do overlap a little bit. So just in case anyone's wondering, those come a little bit later. We're going to concentrate on the sloth for now. So the sloth has lots of brown in it. Just want to point that out. So we'll be mixing lots of different browns. So if you have brown pre-mixed, that'll help. But I will, of course, teach you how to mix all these beautiful browns. Um, I will start with the face just because it's a nice light brown. We can kind of carve out where the face is. It's a nice, like, pale... Uh, kind of feature just to kind of show the middle of the face here and then what I'll do is I'll do this more medium brown here kind of everywhere on the sloth really just filling in everything uh, I do a little bit of a darker brown for shading at the belly I thought that was a nice little feature as well and then I guess the main part is really that we go in with a nice kind of chocolatey brown to do all of this uh, kind of outlining some little uh, pieces of fur here just to make them look a little fuzzier uh, of course, we have a few other details around the face here, like our little eyes, um, our little markings on the eyes, our nose and mouth, but I'll get to those as well. Those will all be kind of a little bit afterwards, but yeah, we'll start with the nice pale kind of beige color to begin with. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. So you can take your brush, you can wash it off. I am using a nice medium round brush. And listen, if you have brown already, you can just add lots of white to it to obtain this nice beige color. If you need to mix brown with me, or maybe you've used up all your brown from the branch, um, just as a reminder, red and yellow, and then a little bit of black. And you're gonna start with that just to make your nice chocolatey brown. So just like the brown that you made here. And then once you have the brown, you're gonna put a lot of white in there, or what you can do instead, I guess would be easier to use 
kind of a pile of white and just grab a tiny bit of your chocolatey brown, mix it in, and you get a nice kind of pale brown, kind of almost a beige color. It's something along those lines. Anything very pale, it's almost like a sandy color. So again, if you already have brown, you can just put a little bit in a pile of white. If you need to mix brown, it was red, yellow, and then a little bit of black. Oh, Susan says, go to YouTube, type in House Hippo 2.0. <laughs> okay. I'm glad it's there. I'm glad it's there. I think uh, Twitch is already on it as well. I think they're all watching it and checking it out. I cannot right now, but I will later for sure. So again, it's kind of this beige, kind of pale sandy color. A lot of different names for it, whatever you think of it as. Uh, but all I'm doing is I'm just doing a nice round oval inside the bigger oval. So I don't need to fill in the whole thing. I'm just doing kind of where the face is. So again, just a nice smaller oval inside the bigger one. Oh, and you know what? I moved the oval down further. So I'm going to do that here. Overlapping. And just as usual, it does not need to be perfect. I just saw fireworks go off. Interesting. Oh, what is Labor Day weekend? Okay. <laughs> Anyway, saw some quick little flashes out of the corner of my eye there. Um, right, so I'm just doing a nice oval inside the big oval. And I was in the middle of saying it doesn't need to be perfect because we'll be doing a nice medium brown around and you can use the medium brown to shape that up in any way you like. Oh my, he's riding a Roomba, what? Yay, I'm so excited, Anna. See, and now Atomic wants a house hippo. Everyone wants them. How to make beige. Sophie, so it's essentially like a very, very light brown. So if you make a brown, a nice chocolatey brown, maybe you have it from the branch or maybe you need to remake it. Uh, if so, it's red, yellow, and a little bit of black. That'll make your nice chocolate brown. And then all you need to do is grab a teeny bit of that brown and put it in a large pile of white. And that'll make a nice beige or just sandy color, whatever you want to think of it as. No worries, Brittany. You can even do the leaves on top too. I mean, I like to layer the sloth kind of on top of it all, but depending on your spacing, you might not even need to overlap. I would say my original doesn't have much overlap except for the little vine, but otherwise you're probably good to do whatever order you like. No worries. See, Kit Kat wants one too. Everyone wants a house hippo. We wish they were real. Oh boy. It's a shame they're not. Again, we were all heartbroken as kids when we figured out house hippos weren't real. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the main color of brown. So the main color you can kind of see here. I would just call this a medium brown. It's kind of like a warm medium brown. Um, so once again, we've learned how to make chocolatey brown. And to make more of a medium brown, you can do uh, one of a few things. You can add just maybe a little white in there to lighten it up and that'll make more of a medium tone brown. You can also kind of re-add some yellows and reds in there so you're kind of counteracting the black because the black is what really makes the color nice and dark. So if you want to do a little white or a little yellow red in there, any of the above will work. And it kind of depends on what shade you want. If you wanted a little more of this kind of warmer tone, I would continue to add maybe a little bit of red in there, for example. If you like more of the beige scenario, like not quite the light beige, but more of a beigey brown, you can add more white in there. The white I find makes more of a beige color rather than a warmer brown. So really up to you what you want to do with it. But any of those will work just using your chocolate brown, which was red, yellow, and black. And then you want to either add white or you can add more red and yellow to kind of bring it back to a lighter tone. Again, if you're a little nervous about how it's looking, just throw a little on there, see how it is. I've thrown a bit on there. I think I need it a little lighter. So I'm gonna put a little more white in there. Just a wee bit. Cause again, we don't want it as light as that face there. We just want it more of a medium tone. A little better, right? Yeah, there we go. So whenever you're happy with your color, you're just putting that um, everywhere. Yes, everywhere on the sloth except for the face that we carved out. So I'm going to remove this. And again, you can see how it just overlaps that branch so we didn't need to worry about 
moving things around on the branch. We're just putting the sloth right on top. So at this point, you should be pretty much just filling in what you already have in terms of your sketch. If you need help with anything, just let me know, or you can kind of visually see what I'm doing here to kind of map it all out. So we have kind of the one that the leg that curls around here. Everything else will be below the branch here. And I'm not worried about shading right now and I am covering up my outline so you won't see where the arm and the leg are anymore but we're going to add those back in anyway. It was more just so you could see as we were creating the shape of course so you were more comfortable with the shape itself. If you want to use a bigger brush for this, that's totally fine. I like to keep the medium sized brush for this just because I find it helps with these curves here, like going around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. I'm not going to be able to say that anymore without singing the song. But yeah, it does help with the curves kind of going around. So, uh, Hello, Geraldine. Hello, Manisha. Welcome in from Facebook there. Hope you're well this evening or morning, depending on where you are. We're getting more and more from all around the world. So uh, I'm trying to be conscious of time zones and not saying good night all the time. It's possibly a good morning for a lot of you. I know for many of you it is. He's a big sloth. Nice and well fed. Oh, hi there. Typical Will. Thank you. I'm happy that you uh, enjoy the painting. Do, do, do. Or 10. <laughs> How are you this evening? Again, just continuing my sketch here. So I'm bringing this guy around here overlapping one overlaps here a little bit. We have the paw kind of coming around like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course I'm carrying this around the head here. So the head and the neck are all just kind of squished together. He's a very squishy little sloth. There's no real neck really, it's just kind of cuddled right in there. Just circling around. So again, this is still the same shade of brown the whole way around. This is very much the base color. We'll be adding some details to make them a little fuzzier, a little more shapely after uh, we give a quick minute for you guys to continue that there. And I think I'm going to curve this part a little more. Right there. Cool. Patricia, thank you for sharing a fun painting. I'm so glad you had fun. You're very welcome always, always. All right, so again, I'm just leaving a quick half minute now in case uh, anyone's still adding that first brown. We're just gonna add lots of little details to this guy, make him nice and sloth-like. He looks so cuddly right now. He just, he's like a giant teddy bear. Truly. Nice one big blob. Mm 
So we'll separate a lot of stuff with our nice dark browns, but yes, you can see it's very, very blobby right now. Okay, so first thing I want to do is just kind of darken up the belly a little bit. So you can see I added some shading right here, just kind of where the belly is versus where the arms will be. So if it helps you, you can definitely use uh, your color that you were going to shade with, which is just brown with a little bit more black in it. I guess if you have, I guess I should say the main shade of brown, just add a teeny bit more black in there and that'll make a nice dark version of that brown. If you need to, you can use this to kind of shape out where the arm and the leg are going so that you know where the belly is in here. So I'm just following this curve down further, following this curve down further, kind of creating almost a V shape. And now I know the belly is all in there. So again, just using a little tiny bit of black inside of that existing brown that you had on your plate. I'm just using that color and just kind of sweeping down from where that branch meets the sloth belly. It creates a little bit of shading. Just piling on a little bit more personally. Again, up to you how dark or how minimal you want it. I just think it's nice to have a little bit of shading just to really show where the legs and the arms are as well. Just sweeping down like that. Mm-hmm. If it ever gets a little too dark or you need to like blend it or anything, well, first of all, it should still be a little wet. So you should be able to blend just by lightly sweeping kind of back and forth a little bit. But what I was going to say was you can always re-grab the original brown and kind of pile that on top or use it to blend anything. So feel free to do that if you need to. Just grabbing the original brown and kind of piling it on or using it to blend. So quick little bit, tiny little bit, and then we're going to start to add our nice kind of dark brown detail all around. So I'm just mixing even more brown on my plate. So yeah, lots of different shades of brown. I would say this next shade that we're doing is a little, it's kind of in between um, our, I guess, shade here and the, uh, yeah, the shadow versus the branch. We don't really want to make a shade quite as dark as the branch. It's going to be the darkest brown we have, but we're kind of going in between now. So nice, rich, rich, rich chocolatey brown without being quite that dark. So personally on my plate, I'm just mixing a little more red and yellow on top of my existing brown that I was just using. That makes it a little more chocolatey. And again, as long as it's darker than your base color, that's pretty much what you're aiming for. So I have that ready to go on my brush. Uh, I would say the first thing I like to do is kind of outline the whole sloth. So I'm not doing a solid outline. What I do is I take the tip of the brush and I do small little flicks. It's almost like not really a dotted line, but you're flicking kind of around and out. So you're not flicking all the way around, just like going around the whole border. You're doing small little flicks that kind of come out as well. So it almost looks like fur. But you can see it helps really define and outline the sloth a little bit. So I'm going to go from this side to kind of following the curve and also coming out a little bit so you get little strokes of fur. I go around here and I do that. So again, this will help define the leg and the arm. So just by doing these small little brush strokes like this, you can kind of see where the leg is going now. Same thing with the arm all the way around like this. Just resting it on top. And of course, again, this base color is a little wet. So just as a little uh, heads up, you might want to add a little bit more uh, paint to your brush. You might want to use a little less pressure and then that way it's not going to mix as you go. Casey, Dilla, welcome in. You love sloths, huh? You're amongst friends here. A lot of us love sloths tonight. How have you been today? I'm just continuing my outline, everybody. So I'm going to outline, yep, a little over here. 
going around this guy here. Even the paw deserves a little bit of an outline. The head, of course, and I have more details for the head, but I'm just starting with a little bit of an outline. There he is, he's starting to come together. And once I have the outline, you can continue these little strokes inside the sloth too. Now when you're going inside the sloth, you don't want to make these strokes so close together. You can see how I piled all this outline very close and tight together to make kind of like a solid line almost. But inside the sloth, we still want to use the tip of the brush and flick, but we're just going to space these out a lot more and then that way it looks more just like texture or fur. It's not really the outline or anything. We don't want it to interrupt like the outline of the leg or the arm. We're just kind of adding some little pieces of fur everywhere and they kind of follow along the shape of the sloth. So you can see I'm coming down the leg, for example. You can do small and big strokes, a little bit of a combo. But yeah, I come down and around. They even can come down here a little bit if you'd like. All little tufts of fur, you know? down and around this neck area here. See how fuzzy he's getting? Oh, the more the better, I think. Don't forget his little paw. Just a couple little ones on there. And then around the face, we really want to pile it on. Just as a reminder what that looked like. We really pile them on. So it's almost like you're outlining the whole thing with this nice dark brown fur. And then I will be going in for the eyes as well, just so you know. So same thing, we're still flicking, but we're just flicking a lot more nice and tight together, really making this nice and dark all the way around. You can even give them a little hairdo if you want. I like to flick a few just kind of like up at the top there like a little tuft. I think that's so cute. So I did that. But mainly kind of framing the whole face and this is what's going to show the face in amongst all of the body here because remember I said we don't really have a neck going on right now. It's more so just a big scrunched up shape. So we want to use this dark brown to really show where the head is versus the rest of the body. So just continuing to grab that nice chocolatey brown, stroking it in. There we go. Very fuzzy, super fuzzy. Had to go back and finish the leaf because it's lost over top. Oh, no worries. I'll be fine. Oh, no worries. No worries. Uh, light green on top of the leaves was done with the... Yes, I did the tiny brush for that. Yeah. You could technically use the, the medium one, maybe, but the small one, I think, is a lot easier for that, for sure. All right. So just a nice big fuzzy face now. And then one more thing with this color. I want to use this to kind of map out where the eyes will be. So... We have like kind of markings on the eyes. You can see the eyes themselves are using black, but I like to do this brown marking just like a real sloth would have. So kind of choosing where the eyes would go. They're kind of like right on the sides in the middle here. And we're just kind of pulling this dark brown from the inside out, kind of down like this, kind of slumpy, very droopy, mm, very, very sleepy. And then we do the same on the other side. I start a little thinner, you can see, in the middle, and then I kind of widen out as it connects with the outside there. I'm just kind of keeping them as even as possible. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I'll give everyone a minute or two just to maybe catch up if you need it. But yeah, he's really coming together now with that little fur. We just have a couple other details left. Just have like the nose, the mouth, little eyes there, some claws. 
and then I'll finish off with the two little vines again. Totally optional. If you think it's very full with your leaves, you can leave it, but I like the little vines kind of hanging off. Elaine, no worries. Thanks, we'll finish tomorrow. You're very welcome, Elaine, no worries. What am I singing? Oh, am I humming along? I'm not sure. <laughs> if I was, then it was accidental. I'm not quite sure what I was humming, to be honest. <laughs> uh, right now I'm just listening to copyright free music though, if that's what you hear in the background. <laughs> if I was humming, it was completely accidental. <laughs> I don't know. He's so cute. Thanks, Grokey. Hey, this is so cute. I'll adapt to this one more. Yeah. Again, let me know if you have any questions. I think it's a cutie too. I'm just so happy I could give you a sloth. Everybody a sloth who was asking for it. It's been a while. It's been a while. Make him stick his tongue out. Maybe after on Twitch. Okay. <laughs> Pink Whitney liked it anyway. <laughs> Can't wait for that wheat painting. That's going to be a fun one afterwards. Okay, so let's uh, again, let's kind of check out what's going on in here. So we have a couple more little details. We have the nose, we have the mouth, uh, some little claws. Uh, these are using more of like a gray tone brown just to make it a little different than this dark brown. Uh, so just a little lighter, a little more gray tone. So to make it a little more gray tone, it's going to be a little bit of extra white in there. So rather than like a rich brown, it's going to be again a gray tone brown and a little bit lighter. Okay. So I'm just using a tiny bit of white on my brush, mixing it into my previous brown. Oh, no worries, Terry. I understand. Reorganizing your painting area. That's going to be nice when it's all done. No worries, Jennifer, as well. Just pop in to say hi. No problem. Okay, so again, as a reminder, I used a little bit of white in my current brown just to make it a tiny bit lighter and I'm going to map out the nose. So I'm just doing a little button nose. I am using my medium round brush. If you'd like to switch, you can. I will switch to the small one in just a second. It's only slightly lighter, not a whole lot. And then I do a nice big smile. Whee! So again, this is kind of like the base of the nose and the smile. We will be using black to do the nostrils and the smile line itself. This is just kind of the marking of the smile, if that makes sense. Almost like the lips. I guess that would be the proper word. <laughs> that makes way more sense. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There we go. And actually, while we have this color, you can use this for the claws as well. I'm glad I remembered that one. So just a couple little claws, just a few little lines, one, two, three, kind of curving out of that last paw there as if he's really hanging on there. And that's using that same color, just the kind of muted brown. I was wondering why you just tagged him. <laughs> Thank you, Grokey. Yes, that's right, Pink Whitney. Just a little bit of white in the chocolate brown. It helps lighten it up and it helps mute it as well. Just a little more muted rather than like a, a richer, lighter brown, if that makes sense. If I wanted to make it a richer, lighter brown, it would just be more red and yellow in there to counteract the black. But adding the white in there helps kind of like gray tone it up and kind of mute it as well. Mm hmm. next week he's prepping for next week i'll let you guys chat um all right so we have just maybe like two more details left. we've got the black areas here and then i just want to add the vines the vines are my last detail because i like overlapping them a little bit with the little paw and stuff like that so the black here i'm just going to use my nice teeny tiny brush of course i would recommend the teeny teeny tiny brush and here's what we're gonna do. I have sleepy eyes, maybe you can see that. Yes, amongst the dark brown there, just two little U shapes. Ooh, just little, little U's for the closed eyes. If you'd rather do different eyes, maybe like I said, maybe he's peeking awake, maybe he's fully awake, he's watching you as he's hanging out. You can do just little, little dots or something, but I'm gonna do little U shapes. I'm gonna do two little nostrils here. 
Oh my gosh, look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> Joyce, I almost didn't see because my notifications aren't on. This is so appropriate, one second, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna do a little smile line in black. So just those three details, I'm gonna get to those. Um, I'm being rated on Twitch right now, so I gotta shout out my girl, J Joyce Rainbow Art, hello! How appropriate, oh my goodness, we painting our sloth today. This is the tutorial, this is, the, this is it, this is it, Joyce. Welcome in, and I actually was using your sloth earlier when I was talking about sloth emotes. Oh my goodness. How are you? What were you up to? Yes, it's sloth gang. Here we go. You guys, I'm just doing a step-by-step -step tutorial just so you know. And I'm almost done. And then I can chat a little more, uh, a little more concentrated in a minute. But Joyce, please let the people know what you were doing. <laughs> What were you up to on your channel today? Joyce Rainbow Art is a great artist on Twitch. Anyone in my chat, I think a lot of you have already checked her out because I talk about her a lot because I like you, girl. Um, yeah, so I mean, check her out if you haven't. Joyce Rainbow Art. And uh, yeah, feel free to share anything. Uh, just whisper to Miss Groke there. That would be awesome, Joyce, because I don't have link privileges to give out, unfortunately. But yeah, if you want to share anything, go ahead. So appropriate. What that timing? I don't know if you knew I was doing this tonight, but that's that's crazy timing. <laughs> Had to bring the people. Yep. I was throwing your remote around earlier. I've told that potato story at least twice as well. I'm in love with the fact that you thought my emotes were potatoes. I thought that was so great. Aaron potato paints. All right. So my sloth is sleepy. He's a sleepy boy. So I made his eyes closed. As I said, if you wanted to change it, of course you can go ahead. I have one last step for you guys. It's just adding some little vines. So here's my original here. I added some vines on the side, just kind of hanging down just to fill up the space. I found it a little bit empty on the sides and I did want some vines being in the jungle area. So I'll teach you how to do those as our last little step. <laughs> Uh, Liz, it will be available later on. Yes, I have a YouTube channel. Good question. Yes, all my tutorials go on YouTube, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. Same name as Facebook, same name as Twitch. Um, this will be up in a couple days, but in the meantime, it'll be on Facebook and on Twitch for a limited time. It will only move to YouTube or only disappear rather once it moves to YouTube. Uh, Futures, thanks for the follow again. Sorry, I'm missing follows and stuff because my alerts aren't on. I'll turn them on in a minute. And good evening, Diane. So for the vines, everybody, I'm using what I would call a medium green. So I'm using my medium round brush, yellow and blue mixed together, just any sort of bright medium green. It's not super dark, it's not super light. And for all I do for these vines, I just use the tip of my brush. I curl around just like I kind of did with the legs here. You don't know how I started up here, curled around and down over top. That's just the beginning of the vine. And then I just add some little leaves to it by using the tip of my brush, kind of pressing down and pulling in, 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 just going all the way up like this. It's like you're doing small, thick brush strokes and just pulling them into the vine. You can go right on top of the brown because that's all nice and dry, all the way up. And again, I think that just kind of fills up the space a little bit better. That's why I added them just as a final feature there. Now let's do that on the other side as well. James is here. Joyce just raided us. The sloths are here. Again, I'll chat with you all in just a quick second. Just gonna do that last fine, make sure all the tutorial's taken care of. So yeah, Joyce's crew, they're all you sloths. <laughs> Sloth gang. I do tutorials twice a week and uh, Friday night is one of the times. So I'm just finishing this up. So once again, just a little vine, and then I'm just going to use the tip of my brush, pressing down, brushing in, pressing down, brushing in, in, in. Kind of like at an angle too. In, 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 in. Okie dokie, that is it. That's the final step. Here's a little comparison just so we can see. Compare and contrast, it's always a little bit different in terms of, oh wow, very dark, wow, he dried a lot darker, oh my goodness. 
but two good versions, right? Maybe you like the lighter sloth, maybe you like the darker one. You can see the shape is there, the leaves are there. Leaves are a little messy, if I could be honest. Always harder to paint from the side rather than straight on. <laughs> but yeah, those are the two. So at this point, everybody, if you have any questions about the tutorial, I'm fully here to answer and I'm fully here to uh, go through this lovely chat, which I see all these lovely sloths in. Again, I'll say hi to all of you in just a quick second. Leanne, what kind of paint do you use? Mine is so thin and transparent. I use an academic acrylic. This is the start academic acrylic. And I'll be honest, this is a little bit transparent too. Um, I have found ways to work with it. I find using white in, again, the yellows, the greens, things like that. Anything with a base yellow really, really helps. Uh, and just kind of using a larger amount of paint. I feel like sometimes when people start out, um, they want to use like tiny amounts of paint because they're a little worried and that's totally understandable. But once you get a bit more comfortable, using a little more paint doesn't do a whole lot of harm here and there. So try that if you think it's a little transparent. Where did you get it from? If it's from the dollar store, it might be even more transparent than mine. So let me know where you got it from and I can give you a quick opinion if you're interested. Okay, let's see. All right, lots of sloths. <laughs> Read the sloth. Have a good night, Charlene. Woo! It's the Aaron Pastry Human. <laughs> Matthew, I'm sorry. I just caught that comment there. Yes, I'm the bun. <laughs> See you maybe Sunday. Oh, okay, no worries. Not a fan of that one. Uh, okay, no worries. No worries, Charlene. I'll see you later. And you've got acrylic painting. Joyce, the potato story. Yeah, I died. I died. Sleepy boy. <laughs> James is here. Welcome in. I think I said hello already. Looks like mama and papa slot. Oh my god, you're so right. It's a little pairing. It's a little pairing. It's so true. Starting the sloth now. That's okay, Brittany, you're fine. If you have any questions, I'll hang out for a little bit, of course. I'm guilty of the small paint blobs. Yeah, it took me a long time to learn that. It, I was just like always trying to rub the paint off my brush and really dry brushing it. And the more I find more, the better. Like I understand there's like limitations to it. It doesn't want to be, you know, all the paint in the world, but it creates smoother brush strokes everywhere and like nice blending. So yeah, it took a little bit for sure. Hello, Bash. Welcome in. Thank you for the follow just there. Again, my alerts are off just because of the tutorial, but thank you so much. And again, Brittany, it is the sloth painting. If you need to take more time, be a little slower, I think that's totally appropriate today. <laughs> if it's going to be one day, make it today for sure. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Sophie. Leanne and Twitch. I'm on Facebook as well. So if you see me responding to people, it's because I'm on both. I'm managing both chats. Uh, Michael says, Leanne, uh, I have the basics artist loft. Okay. So not to shade artist loft, but I've heard very mixed reviews. I've never really used uh, the artist loft, just plain acrylic brand. I've used it for other things, but I've heard very mixed reviews on it, Leanne. So that might be the issue. It might not be you. Maybe blame the paint. <laughs> it might be the paint. Um, again, I, I this is all I use for all of my tutorials and personal work at this point. <laughs> I've been doing some personal stuff too, and I just keep using this Start Academic Acrylic. I think it's great. Not sponsored, I swear. Um, it's just all I've been using for like five plus years, and it's because it's cheap. It's uh, a two liter bottle for like eighteen ninety nine Canadian. So there you go. That's my uh, that's my recommendation. Uh, but yeah, Michaels, I'm sure, has lots of different brands. I know they do. Um, the Liquitex Basics brand is a little bit of a thicker paint, which is a decent value in my opinion. So maybe look there. And then Amsterdam Acrylics, I agree, uh, is a little thicker and a little better quality for not, not that much more, you know, money. So I'd look into those. Val, thanks again, painting tomorrow. Great job again. Thank you, Val. Enjoy your painting tomorrow as well. Lisa, thank you. I joined late. He's adorable. I'm going to paint him later. Yay! All good. The video will be up in like a couple minutes whenever I end the video. I'm just making sure everyone's taken care of here. Let's see. Is there a blind toot on Sunday? Allie, no, it's going to be the, um, oh yeah, I'll, I'll say my little goodbyes and thank yous, of course. Hold on. <laughs> Sunday painting is this one. If you're interested in following along with another step-by-step -step tutorial, Sunday, 7 p.m. EST. There you go. There you go. It's officially fall, y'all. <laughs> I know it's not officially fall, but it is in my world. So here we are. <laughs> got some geese we got some nice uh yeah fall type vibes a nice dock so this will be sunday 
Um, Ali, I want to do some sort of a blind toot, but it's not quite scheduled yet, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, just to wrap things up in case anyone is looking to go, thanks for coming, first of all. Always a pleasure for you all to join me and paint along. Um, if you'd like to post photos of your paintings, uh, again, Facebook event page will be open up just after I finish this live stream, uh, so you can post all your photos directly in the event page. Again, if you post in the comments of the video, unfortunately the video gets deleted, so I just want to make sure your photos aren't deleted too. Um, so go to the event page and post there in like a couple minutes. Uh, Twitch, if you want to post any photos, Discord is probably uh, more appropriate for you. I know you guys like Discord, so I know Grok put those little social links there. Thank you so much, Groki, and thanks for shouting out Joyce as usual. Um, yeah, you can go to Discord. There's a nice art share channel there. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Yes, Sunday is the next tutorial. There will be more coming up as usual, so just keep your eye on all the social medias. I'll be scheduling all of them there, uh, keeping all my schedules posted. Um, what else do I say at the end of these? I don't know. <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any questions even after I go offline here, just send me a quick uh, direct message on Facebook or in Discord, whatever you like. I'm totally blanking on all my little announcements here, but I think that's, that's about all I say. Um, I guess tip optional, I always say that too. If you want to support me, there are some links in the uh, Facebook event description there. Uh, feel free to click those and support me, but if not, tips are never expected. They're just always appreciated. Just I know some people ask, so they are there. Thank you so much. Um, and I think that's about it. I mean, uh, let's just check in. Chrissy, thank you so much. My seven-year-old and 10-year-old love doing it. Excellent. I'm glad they did. And I'm so glad we had a few families in here today. Um, a lot of you were saying your younger ones were painting along because of the cute old sloth. So I'm so glad they enjoyed. You're welcome, Laura. I'm glad you loved it. Heather says spring here. Yes, he pointed that out too recently on another fall painting that I posted. You're like, oh, not quite fall here. <laughs> I was like, you're right. <laughs> I need to think of worldwide here. Are you in Australia? It's spring. <laughs> so funny. Well, you you can, uh, you know, follow along and ignore the orange and reds. You can just uh, do lots of greens and do a nice dock scene perhaps on Sunday. <laughs> and then next week we have another kind of golden orangey painting too. So anyway, oh boy, I'm missing a lot here. Yes, blind toot on Sunday. Yes, thanks again for shouting out Joyce. Oh yeah, she's worth all the shout outs. She's the best. TJ, what's up? Which is the tutorial one and which is the OG? OG tutorial. I don't know how we ended up so dark. I thought he was quite light. And to be fair, I think the camera isn't doing it justice. You can see my whole face is quite dark. Um, Mac Huto, thanks for the follow. Um, yeah, he ended up so dark. But yeah, <laughs> there you go. And welcome in TJ, nice to see you. Oh, you got it. Yeah, I'm so late on these comments. <laughs> the geese, I know. Sloth couple goals. I'll see you Sunday, Ali. Finished on Discord. Excellent, I'll check it out, Kit Kat. And yes, Sunday. Um, oh, Sunday's just a tutorial. Oh, you mean like, no, yeah, I'm not doing a, oh yeah, no, you're good. Okay. <laughs> no, you're fine, Grok, don't worry about it. Oh boy. Okay, Miriam, thank you so much. I had fun. Great, I'm glad you had fun. Liz will do it later. Excellent. Facebook, I don't think you have any questions. I think you're all saying your goodbyes, which is always appreciated, but I'm going to end the live stream for Facebook specifically because I know some of you were looking to paint it like right now. So I'm going to end it off for you guys so that those who are looking to paint it can. Twitch, I'm going to stay on for at least a couple more minutes. I want to make sure I didn't miss any comments there and to, you know, say my thank yous to Joyce, etc. So uh, Facebook, I will see you another time. Maybe it's Sunday. If you want to see more of me before Sunday, I'll I'll be on Twitch tomorrow at 10 a.m. EST, the usual stuff. It's in that little calendar that I posted. You'll see it. Okay. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, Facebook. I'll see you later.